Hello everybody! It's been a while since I gave you a reading update, so I guess I should do one of these things where I tell you what I thought of some of the books I've read lately. Unfortunately, um, I haven't read anything that really wowed me recently. I liked these books, or I liked most of them, <laughs> but they didn't knock my socks off. They were all light, distracting reads, though, which is what I was looking for, so to that degree, they succeeded. I read Lucky Caller by Emma Mills. It's a young adult book about a high school senior who takes a radio broadcasting class thinking it'll be an easy elective, but instead she and an odd mix of classmates are required to do a weekly radio show, which turns out to be much more challenging than they expected. Add to that the drama of big changes coming in her family, and awkwardness with a boy that she used to be really good friends with who is in her radio group. The story was cute and funny, the first broadcast scene made me laugh out loud, but the main character was kinda blah, lackluster, totally inept at communicating, and I realized that was partly the point. Awkward teenagers learning to communicate and be honest about their feelings, but it made the dialogue kind of a tedious chore to read at times. Also, they decide to make their radio show 90s music themed, and they point out multiple times that none of them were actually alive during the 90s, but their parents were, and that made me feel old. <laughs> I liked this one, but not as much as the other Emma Mills book I read a while ago, Foolish Hearts. I finally got around to reading The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, the major thriller of 2015 about a regular commuter with a serious drinking problem who fantasizes about the perfect-looking couple she rides past every day. When she sees the woman kissing another man, though, it pops the illusion and leads her to get involved in a missing person case. I'll cut to the chase. I didn't like this book. Most of the time I was reading it, I was thinking, I can't wait to be done with this, and I almost quit at 40% because I just didn't care. It did pick up in the last quarter, but not enough to make up for the mediocrity that came before, where the narrative alternated between three indistinguishable points of view, telling a story I had zero interest or investment in. And the twist was predictable, even though the author tried very hard to keep the reader in the dark by omitting proper nouns in key places. That's not creative or compelling mystery writing, that's just lazy. I don't seem to care for any of the hot best-selling thrillers of the last decade, though, with their horde of detestable characters and unreliable narrators, so I should probably just stop bothering to read stuff like this. It only irritates me. I read The Dating Charade by Melissa Ferguson, a contemporary romance where the female lead can't have kids but loves teens and wants to adopt children, and the male lead doesn't want kids but especially not teens. Despite this hiccup, their romantic connection is strong. However, things get complicated when she becomes an emergency foster mom to three kids, including a 14-year-old, and his junkie sister abandons her three little kids, including an infant, at his apartment. The predicament leads to a lot of funny and moving moments, and the way it was written, plus the setting, Christmas in Gatlinburg, made it feel like a Hallmark movie. It had two drawbacks for me. Number one, it was incredibly frustrating that the main characters both spent pretty much the entire novel concealing from each other these important events unfolding in their lives. Number two, the ending was too quick and convenient, leaving a lot of unanswered questions. The craziness of the situations the protagonists found themselves in made me laugh, and I got teary-eyed once or twice. But the execution of this cute and somewhat original concept fell a bit flat in the end. A friend of mine read this next one and hated it, so I had a pretty good idea what I was getting into, um, and read it anyway. <laughs> but still, I wasn't quite prepared for Obsidian by Jennifer Armentrout, book one of the Lux series. A teenage girl moves to a new town right before her senior year. As if that's not tough enough, she has to go to school with her next-door neighbor, Damon, who is super hot but such a jerk. But hey, something weird's going on. Damon has these strange abilities, almost like superpowers. And it turns out he's an alien. He saves her life, and that lights her up like a beacon, calling all these other bad aliens to the area to try to kill him. 
This book was pretty awful. Never mind that the story and the characters were just ridiculous. The writing was not good. The dialogue, borderline nonsensical. I will say it had some moments where the absurdity was amusing and I had to laugh every time it had the gumption to make fun of Twilight even though it's basically the exact same story. <laughs> if you had just given me a sample of this book I would have said this is fan fiction, right? Or a book that hasn't gone to a publisher yet because any editor in his or her right mind would not have let this book go out like this. Right? But no, this is- I read the final draft, the published edition. It has a 4.19 on Goodreads. 4.19! That's higher than everything else on this list. Unbelievable. <laughs> After that, I read Girl Stolen by April Henry, about a blind girl with pneumonia who's dozing in the back of her stepmom's car waiting for her to come back with antibiotics when a young guy hops in and steals the car. The accidental kidnapping soon turns into a hostage situation, and the girl has to use her wits to get away before it's too late. I liked this one. I would say its flaw is that it was very heavy on exposition, where the girl's just sitting and remembering things, or sitting and talking to someone else about her blindness, which made it feel like not just exposition, but educational exposition. But the last act was intense. <laughs> This is the second April Henry book I've read. The first one was The Night She Disappeared, which I really liked. And from what I can tell, Henry's M.O. is stories about disappearances and abductions that are frightening and tense, but are still intended for a young adult audience. They're like a bridge to more grown-up mysteries and thrillers and true crime books. That kind of thing might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if I were a teen, I'd much rather read this than Obsidian or any of its sequels. The most recent book I've finished was How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper. This one's kind of a tragic comedy about a man who works for the government, the British government, looking after the affairs of people who die with no family or friends to make arrangements on their behalf. That's an unusual concept right there, but the conflict revolves around the fact that he accidentally led his boss to believe that he's married with two kids, when in reality he's a loner who loves Ella Fitzgerald and model trains and has some tragedy in his past. The lie gets bigger and bigger, as lies do, until it threatens to ruin his life. This book, which has the alternate title Something to Live For, which is lame and not nearly as provocative as How Not to Die Alone, had some really funny writing, particularly toward the end. It's quirky, offbeat, darkly comic, slightly macabre, you know, one of those books. But it's also rather depressing at times, and it's got one of those pesky concealment dilemmas where one lie leads to another and another and another, when it would have been so much easier to just come out and clear up the misunderstanding the second it happened. But then you wouldn't have a book. <laughs> those plot lines tend to drive me crazy, and the more I come across them, the more I dislike them. So sometimes I enjoyed the book, other times... It drove me crazy, <laughs> but it was different. So there you have it. Those are some books that I've read in the last couple months. It's kind of a mixed bag, but that's not that unusual for me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the update. Let me know what you think, and if you care to share what you've been reading lately in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.